Welcome from ChemHelp ASAP. This video describes the recently approved drug, Geperone, sold under the brand name Exua. This video emphasizes the MedChem properties of the drug rather than the compound's clinical pharmacology. If you happen to be a scientist who worked on this project and is able to speak about this research or your general work at Faber-Kramer, I would be very interested in interviewing you for a separate video. The channel email address is in the video description. Geperone was approved by the FDA on the 22nd of September in 2023. The active pharmaceutical ingredient is Geperone, and I'm giving that a hard G, I guess it could be a soft G, Geperone. That is the U.S. adopted name and international non-proprietary name. The brand name of the drug is Exua. Geperone is administered once a day, orally, and in an initial dose of 18.2 milligrams and escalating up to 72.6 milligrams. Geperone is indicated for the treatment of major depressive disorder in adults. Faber-Kramer Pharmaceuticals sponsored the NDA. Geperone has a very lengthy development history that we will touch upon toward the end of the video. For now, let's better define Geperone's indication, major depressive disorder. Major depressive disorder, MDD, is generally diagnosed through a physical exam, lab test, psychiatric evaluations, and or use of the DSM-5, the fifth edition of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Symptoms for MDD include anxious distress, a combination of depression and mania, melancholy, psychotic traits, and catatonia. One possible treatment for major depressive di disorder is through medication, specifically antidepressants. That brings us back to Geperone. Geperone's mechanism of action is agonism of the 5-HT1A receptor. This is a G-protein coupled receptor. It is a member of a subfamily of serotonin receptors. Serotonin is also called 5-hydroxytryptamine and shown to the right. It's also abbreviated 5-HT. Agonists and partial agonists of 5-HT1A are frequently encountered among anxiety and depression medications. On the screen, we have four different 5-HT1A partial agonists. Our star, Geperone, is in the upper right. A super similar, crazy similar compound is Busperone in the upper left. The two compounds only differ by two extra carbons in busperone. Two other partial agonists are aripiprazole and trazodone. All these compounds have a piprazine ring with an aromatic ring, a tether of three, four, or five atoms, and then another ring system. Lots of structural commonalities across these ligands. Of course, that's why they have similar functionality partial agonism of 5-HT1A. The on-target potencies for three of the compounds from the previous slide, Geperone, Aripiprazole, and Busperone are on this slide along with 5-HT1A's endogenous ligand, serotonin. Serotonin has the highest potency, serotonin is also a full agonist. The other three compounds have comparable potencies, Geperone seems to have the lowest potency of the group, but it is in line with the very similar busperone. Let's look at some of the key physicochemical properties of Geperone. This compound has a reasonable molecular weight, lipophilicity, and number of hydrogen bond donors and acceptors for an orally administered compound. There is nothing remarkable or surprising on this slide. Here are the key pharmacokinetic parameters of Geperone. The half-life is five hours, about twice busperone, and the bioavailability is in the 14 to 17 percent range, also higher than busperone. So it appears that Geperone is a 
bit more metabolically stable than the very similar buspirone, that reduced hepatic clearance appears on this slide both as a longer half-life and higher bioavailability. The prescribing information does list the volume of distribution as 94.5 liters. There is no listed clearance, but it can be calculated from typical equations for calculating pK parameters. Both clearance and volume and distribution are also listed with alternate units, assuming a 70 kilogram patient. Plasma protein binding is moderate and renal excretion of the unchanged drug is zero. Geperone has two main metabolites. Both arise from CYP-mediated oxidations. On the left is 3 prime hydroxygeperone with a new OH on the glutaramid ring. On the right is 1 pyrimidineal piprazine, also called 1PP. This metabolite arises from dealkylation of one of the piperazine nitrogens. At steady state, the circulating concentrations of these metabolites exceed the concentration of the parent drug. And these metabolites do contribute to the pharmacological effect of Geperone. In terms of safety, Geperone does carry a boxed warning. Like many antidepressants, Geperone can increase thoughts of self-harm in patients, especially younger patients, which is why Geperone is only approved for use in adults. Geperone also carries a risk of QT interval prolongation. This serious cardiovascular risk is a calling card for compounds with Herg channel inhibition. In a cursory church, I could not quickly find any evidence of Herg channel binding by Geperone. The safety risk, however, does imply some Herg inhibition. Geperone also shows some degree of developmental toxicity. I mentioned earlier that Geperone has something of a history. The compound was prepared at Bristol Myers Squibb in 1986. That was the same year of Busperone's approval. Busperone was also developed by BMS. In 1993, Faber-Kramer licensed the rights of Geperone. Geperone has since been through multiple NDA rejections, one in 2004 and another in 2012. A key breakthrough for Geperone seems to be the design of an extended-release formulation, which is at least one reason for the drug's approval in 2023. Those are some highlights for Geperone, marketed as Exua by Faber-Kramer. Geperone is approved by the FDA for the treatment of major depressive disorder. Geperone acts as a partial agonist of 5-HT1A. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed this discussion of the approval of Geperone. Please consider subscribing to the channel, leaving a like, or making a comment. Take care.